All right, so in the last one, we had a little introduction into Preact, and now we're going to keep building on some of that material that we covered. So just a brief recap, we're actually rendering to this HTML element here using this render function that's actually right here, and it's targeting that ID. And then we're using Preact to display HTML elements such as this div inside of the web page. And we can see that by going to elements, div ID, and we have our div there. So now let's hook up the rest of the data. So if you recall, we were working on setting up the player's data to be displayed inside of this window. Um, in order to display the player's name, we need to hook in an alt function here. So we do that inside of component did mount. And for each thing that we do inside of component did mount, we actually have to make a function for it. So the best way to explain this is when alt on is called, we need it to bind to a function inside of our class. So we're going to call this function set player name. Or actually, it was called display name if I'm not mistaken. Yep, display name. So we're going to call this display name. All right. And we're just going to wrap that in a tag here, put name, and now we have our function. <clears throat> so we want to modify the current name. So you could probably take a wild guess about what we're about to do. It's pretty similar to something that we've done in the last episode. And it has a lot to do with this code right here. We're going to take that and literally just put it right here. Okay. I'm going to tab twice here. And we need to assign name to name. In order to do that, we actually, because the variables are the same name, all we need to do is put that name inside of here. If it was a different name, however, and we wanted to assign it to this variable, and let's say this variable was username, we would need to do name and then colon username. So essentially, this is the same as the other one that we just displayed. So now we need to call this function from inside of here. Okay, so we're going to do alt on display name. Let's double check that function name just to make sure. Yep. And then instead of doing a function inside of here, and instead of just doing display name, that will never work, we actually have to do a bind. And the easiest way to explain a bind, so it will look like this, bind this, okay. The easiest way to explain what this is doing is it's taking and making a copy of this function and it's binding it to this class. So the only way for us to access the state successfully is by binding our function. So anything that we do with alt that has to do with a function needs to be bound. And when it's bound, it will be able to call this correctly and be able to set the state, which is something that is very important for understanding how Preact works, okay? So now that we have that set up, we can now go in game and see like the name change. Um, we're going to go ahead and comment out this section of code here because we don't want the name to be changed anymore, especially uh, when we're working with it in the browser. And the last thing that we need to add is an event listener for when the key is pressed. Okay. So these are a little bit tricky. Um, Adding window events to Preact has always been a bit of a weird task. The best way that I can explain it is instead of doing it on component did mount, you want to do it inside of the constructor. And we need to call it something specific. So I like to call it something along the lines of key down bind. Okay. And then we're going to make it a reference to a function that will be inside of here. So we're gonna call this the key down function and it's gonna pass the key to it, okay? So we're gonna leave a little comment like that to keep it open. And we want to assign this function to this variable inside of the class. So if we do this key down 
bind this, then that means that whenever we create this component in the future, we can access it through here. Okay, now, now that it's bound to this right here, we have a copied function that will always persist in the same manner. So <clears throat> when we do our component did mount, this is where we set up our bind. So if we add window.add event listener, and then we do our key down, okay, instead of directly binding it like this, we actually use the one that we set up above in the constructor because this is a persistent type of bind. So when it's persistent like this, this means that we have a reference function that we can turn off later. So when we add an event listener in the component did mount, we also need a way to remove that component um, from our listener. So, and in order to do that, we're actually gonna look up some Preact.js documentation real quick so I can show you guys how this works. So if you go over to the guide and we're looking for something to do with components and we're looking for these lifecycle methods. So the one that we're using is component did mount. So this is after the component gets mounted to the DOM. And this is prior to the removal of the DOM. So we want something, we want to unbind our function after it's been unmounted. So if we like change the web page or do anything weird, um, this is how we would unbind our window event listener for key binds specifically built for our web page. So for like uh, closing the web view. And to give you an idea of what would happen if we did not unbind this, if you loaded another web page, you would technically have two key down events happening. So when you press escape, you'd be pre pressing escape twice. So that's why it's very important that we unbind a majority of these, uh, a majority of these keys. So if, or these event listeners. So if we do remove event listener and we do key down, and then we use that same bind that we have created earlier. So think of it just as a special variable that helps link these two functions together so that they can be added and removed very easily. Okay, so now that we have key down here, we're going to take the key code that we have here. We're going to go ahead and take that with us, put that right here. So we're going to rename key here to E, and now we have our functioning close window. And we can actually now remove all the rest of this code. And as you can see, it's relatively clean and easy to understand. Um, so let's take a look at what it looks like inside of the web page. So it defaults to Johnny Ringo. And if I press escape, it says closing window. So we have all of our main functionality here and we didn't have to do anything inside of HTML and we wrote all of it inside of JavaScript, which is why Preact is super, super cool. So now let's go ahead and test this in game because it's already, so we may as well test it in game as well, right? So let's do a reconnect in game. So if you look in the top left, I'm going to try and put this near some light. There we go. We're going to do slash load page. As you can see in the top left, it still says Johnny Ringo. So what is something that we did not do? I'll give you a second to think about it. We did not add an event for ready. So we need to add that into our uh, system. So we're going to copy this ready. Component did mount. After we bind the event, we will do alt emit ready. And then we'll close this, restart it, and we'll go ahead and load into the client again and do our little restart. <clears throat> okay, so let's load it again, load page. 
and it still looks like it's a little bit too quick. So what can we do to potentially get this to run for us? So we're going to go ahead and add a timeout here. Let's do about two seconds on here before we fetch the data. Well, actually, we don't need two seconds. We probably just need about a half a second. So we add our little timeout there. And then it'll call the ready function. And then hopefully it will send our display back up. Otherwise, we're going to have some more timing issues to deal with. And there we go. Now we have our name in the top left. It's a little hard to see, but I'll highlight it there for you. And as you can see, we have now fetched data from the <clears throat> Preact side, the web page side, which is done through here. And when that data is called for, we set it inside of this bind, and it gets mounted to the state, and then the state is then displayed. So now we have an understanding of how to display different parts of state, how to interact with them, and how to bind functions from alt into our web view. So after this, we'll move on to e the even more complicated stuff, where we start working with buttons and things like that in the web view as well. So we can start working with uh, interfaces and things like that.